Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Kevin Lyons. He's the Monroe County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Joanna. Now, Kevin, when we were kind of introduced to high tunnels in the state of Kentucky, it really was a game changer on um, season-long production and those type of things and being able to raise some higher value crops all year long. And strawberries is one of those crops. Yeah, I think it's a, kind of a, a really nice fit for a high tunnel in, in several instances. You can, you know, grow lots of things in it, uh, in your high tunnel, but I guess they were going to focus a little bit on the strawberries. Um, they're, they're a lot easier to manage inside than they are outside in the open field. And there's several advantages to doing it in the high tunnel. And um, so a lot of, I think they're kind of gaining in popularity. I get a little more questions about it all the time. How does it work? What, you know, the profit, the, the problems, all those type of things. Absolutely. Now, with the strawberries in the high tunnel, you plant them in the fall, right? Yeah, it's, uh, I think the most common way is it's a one, kind of a one-shot deal. You have to replant every year because in the high tunnel, they're on some type of plastic culture or ground cover and drip irrigation. So they, the plant can't go out and suck her into the ground like it would out in an open field type setting. So, but it makes it economical to do it that way because you can uh, get them in there a little bit tighter than you would outside and you're able to increase your yield where it makes it uh, economically viable to do it. And it, it helps manage pest problems, disease problems inside because it's more of a controlled environment. And you know, growing up we had a strawberry patch and mm -hmm. probably the biggest battle we had were weeds in the patch and there wasn't very many herbicides that you could use that wouldn't damage the strawberries. Mm -hmm. But with it being on plastic, I would assume that weeds would be less of a problem in a high tunnel. Yeah, it really reduces the, the weed uh, problem and the uh, different variety of weeds that come in. And I mean, it's just, and there's always some seed that's laying in the, in the dirt and will come on later. So if you've got something to kind of keep those suppressed where they can't get up through the soil or, you know, into sunlight, and it just keeps it uh, cleaner when you're picking. Uh, not, not a lot of mud and, and keeps you out of the weather. So it's good for the people that's in there harvesting as well. But the, the lack of weeds is a big plus. Uh, you have to do a little hand pulling around where the plant's coming up through that plastic culture um, and maybe around the edge, but it's nothing like it would be outside. I think I've had strawberries in my high tunnel for three seasons now. On this last the December when it got down really cold a couple of nights was really the first problem I had. I could have put some heat in there, and but I just I thought, well, I'll just see. And because uh, it's not my main commodity or my main income. So I just kind of wanted to experiment with it a little bit. I think I probably lost about 20, 25% of my full production, but it got down to zero a couple nights in a row. But before that, it had never, I just lowered the curtains, shut the doors, all that type of stuff, no heat, and it makes it fine. That was kind of a really unusual event we had there. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're low maintenance in the winter, you know, for sure. Absolutely, and I think one of the advantages with high tunnel strawberries is because that's it's in the spring we're like our mouth are watering for those strawberries. Mm -hmm. You're able to actually get production earlier than field strawberries. Yeah, um, and lots of times I think it's at least six weeks ahead, and sometimes up to two months ahead, depending on the weather. Uh, you'll plant the plugs in third week of September. You'll maintain them, water them, fertilize them through the drip irrigation and pull off any uh, runners and kind of keep them trimmed where you want them to bunch, you don't want them to spread, so you keep all that down. But you want lots of flowers and lots of uh, growth in the center. Uh, and that's kind of it until winter, and you know, put some water on them occasionally in the winter, but they're kind of going to be there until they get ready to do that uh, spring growth, and then they, they really take off. And, uh, you know, I think we started selling about uh, last of March a couple of times. I think it was more into the first week of April this time, but you know, about six weeks ahead. And then of course you extend it at the end too. Uh, if you're growing something besides strawberries, you can extend your fall season with a high tunnel. But we go about two months, uh, you know, when it starts getting warm in June, that's, that will take the strawberries out. So I think we went to the middle of June this time. So had about a two months growing season. Yeah, which which is good. Good for strawberries, yeah. Absolutely. They're in that environment where you can manage them that way. Now, do we have information at the university about high tunnel strawberries? Yeah, we've got a really good publication just on that particular topic. And then we've got, you know, um, lots of things on high tunnels in general. 
greenhouses, fruits and vegetables, all those things. All right. Well, appreciate the information, Kevin. And if you have questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.